Hi, YouTubers and much shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeToon.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on, I got a, I got a really good coffee that we featured on the show before. And also the mug. Hang on one minute, one minute. That is absolutely wonderful. Courtesy of viewer William Meredith. Uh, this is terrific. Bean to Bean Franklin Reserve. Absolutely wonderful. This is a medium dark roast. Really has a little more boldness to it. Really, really like this one a lot. And I get a lot of the tasting notes. Black cherry, honey, and brown sugar. Absolutely delightful. And of course, we're using it in my bean to bean coffee mug this morning. <laughs> I love this coffee mug. It's just got a classic cafe, sidewalk cafe kind of look to it. Just a great coffee house look to this mug. And I know there was one viewer out there who ordered it because uh, he, he liked the look of it on the show. And it really is a terrific, terrific coffee mug. We will link to the uh, folks at uh, Bean to Bean so you can check out their coffees and also get one of these great, great coffee mugs. My thanks again to uh, viewer William Meredith out there for very, very kindly sending this along. Hey, how you doing this morning? Great to see you. Thanks so much for stopping by and tuning in. Really, really do appreciate it. As we say on the show, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug. Let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. Absolutely. Hang on. One more. Yeah, that really is a wonderful, flavorful uh, cup of coffee. Nice, bold cup of coffee. So my thanks to William Meredith again for the coffee and for the cup, which uh, gave me a great cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> Thanks again, William. Really do appreciate it. And hey, if uh, you're taking me along on your morning commute this morning, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate it. Uh, and for those of you who are listening to the podcast, thanks very much for tuning into that. Really do appreciate that. We got a great show this morning. Let me take a look at my notes here and tell you what we have uh, this morning. Oh, we have an update on the 100-year-old shave that we've been planning. Wait till you see that update. And we also have an update on the King Oscillating Razor. Uh, yeah, that razor was very kindly uh, uh, given to the channel by viewer Kevin Laird. We've been talking about something that Kevin Weiss was uh, sending along. Well, that arrived, and also something else arrived with that 100-year-old shave. So I'm really, 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 really excited to show that to you. Uh, we also have a new razor to introduce you to in uh, new wet shaving gear. Really excited to show that to you. Perfect for the holiday season. Absolutely. And you'll find out why. Uh, we also have an update on the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. Uh, viewer Chris Eikenberry sent along a couple of items. Really, really nice items that are being uh, added to the prize package pool. Thanks very much, Chris. Really do appreciate that. We've got some great refill comments. Uh, we have some new podcast news. Yeah, an update on the podcast. So if you're listening to the podcast, well, stay tuned for that. We'll tell you all about that. Uh, we got some great questions and comments, and we also have a couple of great shaving tips this morning. So thanks very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Again, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. Great to see you. Great to be with you. Love getting together with you and talking all things traditional wet shave. And you know what? Let's kick the show off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip. Well, this morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Greg Pisanti, and that's spelled P-E-S-A-N-T-I, Greg Pisanti. Greg, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Anyhow, Greg wrote, Mark, I was watching your Farmhouse North video this morning, and I started thinking about a soap that I've been having trouble getting to lather. Then it hit me that perhaps my tap water was the reason why. So I decided to try and build a lather using nothing but distilled water. And right away, boom, lather. <laughs> wow, what a difference. I truly can't believe that's all it was. So if any of you wet shavers out there have a soap that's giving you trouble, distilled water might just save the shave. Thanks for all the videos, Mark, and I hope this tip helps someone. Cheers, Gregory 
Passante. Now, he also added a, a PS here. Just look at the lather that soap created, Mark. It really is unbelievable that the only thing that prevented that was not using distilled water. Wow, that is a lot of lather there, Greg. And I'm so glad that distilled water was the uh, solution to a, a stubborn soap that wasn't giving you much of a lather. So folks, if you have a shave soap out there that's just not hitting its stride in creating a lather for you, try distilled water. That's a really, really great, great uh, method, a great routine, uh, a great solution. I think we may have talked about this in previous Monday morning mailbags, but that's okay to revisit these because there are new viewers who are coming along all the time who may have not seen that original tip. And it's also great for a reminder to a lot of our loyal viewers out there that, uh, you know, hey, yeah, I forgot all about that. Use distilled water. Absolutely. So, Greg, thanks again for a really, really terrific shaving tip this morning. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the uh, morning shaving tip segment of the Monday morning mailbag, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So once more, Greg, thanks for a really, really great shaving tip. Really do appreciate it. Well, we have an extra shaving tip this morning, and it comes from viewer Bart Bartlett. And Bart writes, Hi again. My daughter gave me a badger brush for my birthday. This is my first badger, and the info sheet claimed there was no terrible smell. After I washed, rinsed, and dried it, I could detect a slight unpleasant odor. I've seen videos showing the steps that some use to break in a badger brush and to eliminate the odor. But I have not seen this particular technique. I soaked my badger overnight and added one teaspoon of a favorite splash to the water. When I rinsed and dried the brush, the only smell I could detect was the splash. After my next two shaves, there is still no unpleasant odor. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for a really, really great shaving tip this morning, Bart. Really, really do appreciate it. A really easy method to eliminate an unpleasant owner from a new badger brush. Folks, uh, if you have a badger brush, a new badger brush, and you're trying to get rid of that unpleasant odor, uh, give this method a try. <laughs> I really would be interested in hearing the results you get. And also, if you have stumbled on to this method or a similar method, uh, like the one Bart is sharing here, please pass along to us and uh, we'll share it again on the uh, Monday morning mailbag. But this is really a really neat, neat method and very, very easy to do. Just uh, add a teaspoon of your favorite splash to some water and soak the brush overnight. <laughs> I mean, that's really a neat, easy, and very, very unique method to eliminate an unpleasant odor from a new badger brush. Bart, thanks very, very much for sending along this extra shaving tip this morning. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. As we like to remind you every week, simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more. Monday Morning Mailbag and more. And the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, will come right up. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and now YouTube. That's right. That's the big news. The Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as the Second Cup podcast, are going to be available every single week right here on YouTube. I was recently looking at my YouTube settings, and there was a setting there called Podcasts that allowed me to import all the podcasts for Monday Morning Mailbag and Second Cup, as well as tap in to the RSS feed so that it gets updated every single week 
right here on YouTube. So just know that if you like YouTube, you like hanging around YouTube, this is your platform of choice. Just know that the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as the Second Cup podcast, are going to be available here on YouTube every week at the same time it's available on all those other streaming services. So just to remind you once more, the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast and Second Cup podcast are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and now YouTube. Well, this morning we have an update to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. As many of you know, when this channel reaches 10,000 subscribers, we're doing this awesome, awesome giveaway. And the giveaway is being made possible through the very generous contributions of some wonderful viewers out there. So my sincere thanks to all of them. Well, Chris Eikenberry very generously sent along a couple of other items to add to the prize package pool. And he writes, hey, Mark, I hope you are doing well. I sent a couple of items for you to include in the 10,000 subscriber giveaway, a Captain's Choice shaving bowl and a container of Taylor of Old Bond Street sandalwood shave cream. The bowl is a second that was gifted to me by a friend and was only used once. It does a fine job of making boom lather. <laughs> The shave cream is not something I would use as the slickness is not very good. I shaved a bit off the top and used it and it's not for me. If you can't use these items in the giveaway, I figure you know someone who could use them. Well, we are absolutely going to include these items in the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. Thank you very, very much, Chris. He continues here. Thanks, and keep up the great work you do bringing us updates on gear and other wet shaving news. Thanks. Chris Eikenberry, Bowling Green, Ohio. Well, let's get a look at these items here. First up is the Captain's Choice Shaving Bowl, Lathering Bowl. Boy, this is beautiful. It is a nice, hefty ceramic. It's got that beautiful Captain's Choice logo on the very front of it, and it has a lid. Now, on the inside, you'll see that there are some raised ridges with will allow you to create a nice lather. And it seems to have these three small spikes here that I guess will also help in generating a lather. But in looking at those, it seems to me that those three spikes can also aid in securing and anchoring a hard soap puck. That's what I'm thinking, like say a, a puck of Tabak or a puck of Ogallala Bay rum that I recently reviewed, you know, a hard soap puck so that it doesn't slip around and slosh around on the inside. That's my thought. Now, if anyone else out there can confirm that, please comment below and let us know. But that's my thoughts. Either way, it's going to make a great, great shaving bowl for someone because of the raised ridges that will... Um allow some resistance to help you build a quicker lather. And also, again, I think these three raised little spikes here will help secure a hard puck of soap and keep it in place uh, so it doesn't slide around in there. Absolutely fantastic. So that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you very, very much for that, Chris. Really do appreciate it. A beautiful shaving bowl from Captain's Choice. Uh, beautiful green color with a nice lid. Absolutely fantastic. Will look great on any... Uh, counter in anyone's shaving den. Absolutely wonderful. And he also sent along uh, a tub of sandalwood shaving cream, uh, gently used. It looks like he took a little dollop out of that. No harm, no foul. So we will include that as well. I love the scent of this sandalwood shave cream. <laughs> I think it's classic. It's one of the scents that I was first introduced to when I came back to the traditional wet shave. And uh, as far as the slickness, I guess it's going to be a your mileage may vary. It doesn't, doesn't particularly work for Chris, but it might work very well for you. So Chris, thanks very, very much for sending along a beautiful shaving bowl from Captain's Choice and also a tub of Taylor of Old Bond Street's Sandalwood Shaving Cream. Really, really do appreciate that. And again, I want to thank uh, all the viewers out there who have made such generous contributions to the 10,000 prize, 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. And I need to extend sincere thanks and heartfelt appreciation to them all once again, because they are making this giveaway possible. So sincere thanks and heartfelt appreciation go out to Jimmy V Photography, Beth Jones, Tyler Fike, 
Charles Price, Alex Lopez, Scott Martin, James Sefton, George Haven, Jimmy Day, Bill Murphy, Mark Bagwell, Zachary Norton, Wesley Kirby, Heiko Shaves, Chris Witte, Caleb Bowers, Doug Thompson, Wally Pankowski, James Gazda, David and Barb Kice, Todd Stanfield, Jennifer Cook, Mark Williams, Tom Donnarumma, Chris Eikenberry, everyone at Pretech, and all the folks at Vikings Blade. Thank you all very, very much for making this prize package giveaway possible. And again, I want to extend heartfelt gratitude to all our incredible YouTube viewers for their wonderful support. Whether you've liked, shared, subscribed, or left thoughtful comments, your engagement has been a driving force behind the channel's growth and success. Your dedication motivates me to create more content that I hope resonates with you. I truly appreciate your role in this journey and I'm excited to keep delivering content that you love. Thank you for being an essential part of the Monday Morning Mailbag and this YouTube channel. Well, we have an update to some vintage shaves that we'll be having here on the channel. As many of you know, my friend Sean Suki was cleaning out his late mother's home and came across these razor blades from Gillette. These were in beautiful condition, about 14 unopened packs that's, that appear to be in pristine condition that date back to 1918, according to Matt Pisarsik. So once again, thanks to Matt for passing along the information on these. So uh, a pack of six blades, we got 14 of them unopened and uh, want to shave with them. And uh, viewers have suggested, you know what, you should, get, uh, you should get a razor from the same era. And I happen to have one, and that's my grandfather's Gillette old type. But because these blades are so thick, uh, my fear is that I might crack the handle of my grandfather's old type. Let me show you my grandfather's old type razor right here. The, the, uh, the handle is uh, beautifully intact and I don't want to take a chance uh, cracking the handle. So uh, the solution was to acquire another old type. Well, Mark Bagwell sent me a link to uh, a sale that was going on from a gentleman named Dapper Studio CC. Now, Jamie Horn also recommends this seller. Sells a lot of great vintage razors up there. And this gentleman had about, I don't know, 12 or 13 of, here it is, these old type razors. Look at that. <laughs> That's an absolutely beautiful shape. It's cleaned, polished, sanitized, and ready to go. How about that? Now, there is one small hairline crack in the handle. Let me see if I can... Let me see if you can see that there. there. Let me see. Just try to angle it. There it is right there. Can you see that? It's not very prominent. And uh, you know what? That's okay because that's why I purchased this because um, if I'm going to further crack the handle, it's not my grandfather's razor. That's the whole point here. So uh, now I've got a razor from the same era and I've got the 1918 blade. So now we can go forward with... A, um, a time travel shave, so to speak, as many viewers are calling it. Go, go back in time and feel what it is, feel, feel what it's like to have a shave from the year 1918 with a blade from 1918 and an old type razor, uh, Gillette old type razor that is uh, very, very close to the same year of 1918. I would guess that this is probably somewhere in the 1920s uh, as well. Uh, now, I will show you one thing here. There is one slight difference between this newly acquired old type razor that I got from Dapper Studio CC and my grandfather's old type razor. I'm assuming it's my grandfather's razor. It was found in my late father's shaving kit. So I'm assuming it belonged to uh, uh, granddad. Anyhow, you can see that here's the, uh, the grandfather razor in my right hand and the uh, Dapper Studio razor in my left hand. You can see that the handles are identical. It looks like the uh, handles are identical. And you can see that the caps, the cap uh, on the one that belonged to my grandfather is a little thicker than the one that I that just arrived. 
And that's probably the only difference as I see it. But uh, these razors are identical. And uh, what's really nice is, is that whereas my grandfather's has a tooth that's been just a little, it's a little bit off. See that right there? It's a little bit off, the tooth on the end right there. Well, this particular razor, all the teeth are intact and perfectly aligned. How about that? <laughs> yeah, really, really looking forward to doing this shave now. And I got some great ideas on how to go about uh, recording it and uh, really looking forward to. So uh, I appreciate your patience and allowing me to put it together because uh, I think it's going to be a very, very special shave. Also, we have something else to uh, talk, talk to you about. Uh, uh, Kevin Laird very, very kindly passed along to the channel this um, King Oscillating Razor. Uh, that has rollers on the cap that creates an oscillating motion inside where a razor would be installed and uh, that back and forth motion on the inside of the, uh, the razor would uh, move the blade back and forth so you get an oscillating razor shave. And um, really kind of neat. So the whole idea here is that when you're holding this razor up to your your, your face, then you make sure you engage those rollers as you're pulling it down, and then that will move that blade back and forth. Well, the blades are, are no longer made, uh, and they I, I take it that they are rather scarce, but viewer Kevin Weiss, and thank you, Kevin, very, very much, he very, very kindly sent along, get a load of this, a, 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 a new old stock King Oscillating Razor Blade for the King Oscillating Razor. How about that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Sealed up and uh, ready to go. And it looks like it's going to be, uh, looks like it's going to be in perfect shape, pristine shape. It looks like it's completely sealed, never been opened up. There is no wear or tear on this, on the, on the wrapper at all. So it looks like it is completely, completely intact. And we can then open up this wrapper and install it in this King Oscillating razor and have a shave with this razor. My gosh, I'm excited about that as well. And finally, we also have uh, another shave, another vintage shave coming up. Uh, again, courtesy of viewer Kevin Laird, and he sent along the gem double-sided uh, single edge uh, razor blades. These are razor blades the, that uh, Gem made for the Micromatic razor that actually have two sides to them, two blade sides to them, so that you can install uh, one edge into the Micromatic uh, razor, which is a single edge razor, and then have a number of shaves, and then flip it around and have a fresh uh, cutting edge again to go on and have some additional shaves. So uh, Kevin very, very kindly sent along these blades that are also in beautiful, pristine shape. We, we opened up one last week and uh, we showed it to all the viewers out there. Let me see if I can find that one that was already opened up. Here it is right here. I found it right here. I'm gonna open it up. We, we unwrap this and it sits in a, a little sandwich of cardboard. Let me just show you that real quickly. Okay, and there it is right there. So there it is. It has two edges to it, two sides for a single edge razor. So you just uh, use one side and then after that, uh, that gets dull and starts getting tuggy and pulley, you just pull it out and flip it around in your Micromatic razor and you're ready to go with another shave. And again, you saw it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful shape. And uh, this was a pack of, uh, hang on, one, let's see, it looks like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a pack of ten blades. My gosh, my, my sincere thanks to Kevin Laird for very, very kindly and generously sending these along to the, uh, to the channel. We'll put them back in there like that. And uh, yeah, they're ready to go. So we'll be doing that vintage shave uh, as well. Looking forward to doing that. So my gosh, uh, again, I always say that the viewers make this channel and it's absolutely true. None of this would be possible had it not been for the viewers contributing their uh, wealth of information regarding the traditional wet shave uh, and the, the history that they know 
and actually giving the channel these items uh, so that we can kind of go forward and show all the other viewers out there uh, these vintage, these great, great vintage shaves. So my thanks again to uh, Mark Bagwell, Jamie Horn, Kevin Laird, and Kevin Weiss for very, very kindly sending along these wonderful items and providing some great, great information. So uh, look forward. I'm looking forward to the 100-year-old shave now that I have a uh, an old type that I'm not afraid <laughs> to crack the handle and that sort of thing. That's going to be a lot of fun with a uh, Gillette blade from the year 1918. Once again, my sincere thanks to my friend Sean Suki for, for remembering the channel and grabbing these and, and giving them to me. Uh, I'm so, so glad. I've, I, I've, I tell everyone, uh, I tell as many people as possible about the traditional wet shave. It's kind of in the back of their mind. Yeah, I'm doing the traditional wet shave and that sort of thing because it's kind of in the back of their mind and they remember this. And when they come across one of these items, they'll set it aside for you. So make sure you tell everybody that you do the traditional wet shave with a safety razor. And you never know what they're going to what they're going to provide you, what, what, they, what they find, what they come across. And they'll remember you and they'll, they'll pass it on to you. So um, just keep that in mind. So make sure you tell people out there that you do the traditional wet shave because they might walk into your office as well and hand you something from uh, from the year 1918. Wow, absolutely fantastic. So once again, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Mark Bag. Thank you, Sean Suki. Thank you, Mark Bagwell. Thank you, Jamie Horn. Thank you, Kevin Laird. Thank you, Kevin Weiss. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on one minute. Yeah, that is a wonderful, wonderful cup of coffee. Again, thanks to uh, William Meredith for the Bean to Bean coffee mug and also for the Bean to Bean coffee, uh, Franklin Reserve, black cherry, honey, and brown sugar, a medium dark roast. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. And you know, I forgot to mention, I ran this through my current machine using the, uh, the Max Rona reusable coffee filter. And we will have a link to these uh, so you can, uh, you know, use them in your own Keurig machine. And they absolutely work wonderfully well in my K-Express uh, coffee maker. And also the, um, the K, what the heck is that called again? Let me see what it's called. <laughs> Let me see what it's called. Yeah, the K-Mini and the K-Express. Both of those uh, accept this coffee filter. So uh, just so you know, uh, if you're looking for something for uh, your ground coffee to run through your Keurig machine, these Max Rona reusable coffee filters work very, very well. Just make sure you align that little pokey thing in the bottom of your Keurig machine uh, with that little opening on the bottom there, because if you don't, uh, you're going to punch through the bottom. And it looks like I did that on one of my filters here. Which is why I guess they, which is why I think they give you four of them. So this one is probably no good anymore <laughs> because I didn't align. I, you know, I wasn't thinking. I just kind of threw it in, slapped it down, said, "Oh, wait a minute, I have to, uh, I have to line that up." So that's what happens if you don't line it up with that little opening made for that little, that little needle that pokes through your regular curd cup right there. So just a heads up on that. So make sure you, <laughs> make sure you do that. Make sure you don't mess up like I did. Okay, we have some great refill comments this morning. Let's kick things off with something from James Sefton, who wrote, great 3MB as always, Mark. Hey, thanks very much, James. I appreciate that. The gem razor and blades are really cool. I think it's interesting to see what was used back when, and it makes you wonder what it will be like a hundred years from now. Yeah, again, uh, James makes mention of these uh, gem double double-sided single-edge razor blades that are uh, made for that were made for the gem micromatic razor thanks again to kevin laird for passing these along you're looking forward to this vintage shave on the channel absolutely wonderful and yeah it really is something to look back at the history of the traditional wet shave to see what they were using you know 50 100 75 years ago that sort of thing and also makes you wonder what will 
what uh, where our razors will be a hundred years from now, like like this beautiful, beautiful, timeless uh, bronze razor from Timeless Razor. Absolutely beautiful. This is a lifetime razor. It's just made so wonderfully well, and it makes you wonder who will be using this in a hundred years. Uh, and I sure hope that uh, it finds its way to uh, well, you know. Um, a family member. I hope it's handed down from family member to family member to family member, and I hope they appreciate the traditional let's shave as much as I and as everyone else out there appreciates it. So yeah, <laughs> it'll be interesting. Uh, it would be interesting to have a time machine and go 100, 150 years into the future and see if any of our razors are being used by our heirs or uh, someone else out there. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I've often wondered about that because these are like, you know, timeless razor, they make a lifetime razor. Absolutely. Or any of the other wonderful, well-built razors out there. Um, this comes from Jamie Horn. Great show as always, Mark. Thanks very much, Jamie. I have no issues with my scuttles or any of my bowls. I spend ample time whipping my lather anyhow. As long as it takes me, anywhere from two to five minutes for me. Uh, yeah, this is in regards to that uh, shave I had with Farmhouse North. And uh, I was using a scuttle with some hot water, probably hotter than I should have used the travel scuttle from Phoenix Shaving. And that may have affected the, uh, the consistency of the lather. Uh, and maybe I should have taken a little more time. Maybe I should have. Uh, maybe I should have used water that wasn't at such a hot temperature. Regardless, I have been. I have had uh, a few more shaves with uh, with the Farmhouse North uh, aged bourbon and pear, and it's absolutely wonderful, wonderful shaving soap. It makes a nice lather, lot of slickness, and a lot of glide. And uh, I've gotten some really, really wonderful shaves with it. So uh, make sure to check out Farmhouse North because we're uh, the 10,000 subscriber giveaway is giving away a beautiful package from Farmhouse North that Jennifer Cook very, very kindly donated through uh, David and Barb Kice and Todd Stanfield, that, that cancer fund uh, giveaway. Um, I won two, prize, two chances at their giveaway and won the prize that... Jennifer had donated to that giveaway and we're turning around and we're making it available on this giveaway. So my thanks again to David and Barb Kais, Todd Stanfield, and Jennifer Cook. Uh, Wally Pankowski checked in. Another great show, Mark. Today I use the AccuThrive Persona Med Prep in my Lambda Aries V2 Mid Aggressive. This blade is sneaky sharp. The initial feel is smooth and comfortable. It isn't till I was done that I realized that I just had a very sharp shave. If one uses this blade with an aggressive razor, use a very light touch. I found that this blade really worked well in my mild Rockwell T2 razor. With all that said, this is a great blade. Just use Caution. Yeah, last week we talked about these blades being relabeled as AccuThrive, and Geo Fat Boy has a couple of videos up there explaining it. And uh, Wally, thanks very, very much for sending along this mini review and telling everyone how wonderful this blade is. But yeah, <laughs> it sounds like it's very, very sharp. And I would, uh, I would concur with you that uh, in the Rockwell T2 razor, uh, especially the T2 stainless steel razor, which is dialed down a little milder than the T2, the regular T2, uh, I think that this would be an excellent blade for that razor. So thanks very much for passing that along. Really do appreciate it. Uh, this comes from screen name user GR2JD9SM9W. But uh, this individual writes, Hi Mark, good to see Big Chrome Platinums getting your thumbs up. Yeah, like these blades a lot. And as a matter of fact, I used one of these before cameras rolled. Uh, they're my favorite blade along with Voskods. The usual opinion from both use and tests seems to be that they sharpen up after the first use and then rival feathers. How about that, huh? You can put me down as a no for Astra Greens. Like many, I tried them as one of my first blades and didn't get on with them at all. Over the years, I've given them another chance as I acquired more razors, but so far, it's still a no. All the best from London, 
Martin. Hey, it's Martin. Martin, thanks very much for uh, <laughs> checking in. I should have I should have realized because I before cameras rolled, I went through my notes to see who who wrote me. I, I, forgive me for not putting your screen name and your real name together. But uh, Martin, all the way from London, great to hear from him. And uh, yeah, the, the, the big blades, I happened to uh, uh, use these before cameras rolled in that new razor, and I got an absolutely excellent, excellent shave with them. And I've remarked that my initial feeling is that the blade performs uh, a little better uh, if you use it in a razor that has a little more aggression. Uh, well, wait till you see the razor that I used uh, this blade in, and I, you know, I think that I, th I think the blade is going to be great in any kind of razor. That's what I'm saying here. So stay tuned for that in the new wet shave gear. But so yeah, I'm really enjoying the Bic uh, Chrome Platinum. And again, the thanks to uh, Chuck Price and others out there who uh, recommended them. Really do appreciate it. Robert Ross checked in uh, with your issue of scooping too much shave soap points to the reason why I measure my soap every time. I get consistent results every time with a variety of brands. I measure 1 16th teaspoon of soap and add one half tablespoon of distilled water. That's where I originally heard the distilled water shave tip, Robert Ross. So thanks very much for that, Robert. I really do appreciate it because, again, we had the shave tip this morning from uh, Greg, who uh, talked about using distilled water, and he got a great lather from a shave soap that wasn't performing very, very well uh, to him. And I mentioned, we, we may have talked about that in the past. And we have. Robert Ross, again, uh, I believe it was Robert who talked about distilled water originally. Maybe some other viewers as well. But again, we like to revisit these topics and bring them up again in the shaving tip segment uh, because we're, you know, we're getting viewers all we're getting new viewers all the time and they may not have seen some of those shaving tips from previous Monday morning mailbags. So it's always great to revisit them and also to act as a reminder to all the other viewers out there. You may have forgotten that hey, I I you know what? That's right. I use distilled water and get a better lather. So, uh, Robert, thanks very much for confirming that. He goes on to say, mash into a slurry uh, with a slightly damp synthetic brush. I whip the slurry into a great lather. Try it. You'll like it. Yeah, this is Robert's slurry method that we've talked about it. I've tried it. It works a treat. It really, really does. So give it a try. A little bit of soap. Distilled water, work it into a slurry with your finger, and then get your brush and whip it into a lather. It, it's a really, really good method. So thanks very much for that, Robert. Really do appreciate it. Larry, uh, Larry Sablotny wrote, I appreciate you posting Second Cup on YouTube today. Hey, Larry, thank you very, very much for noticing. I really do appreciate it. And again, that was the big news regarding the podcast, that the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast and the Second Cup podcast are now available on YouTube. They will be available on YouTube uh, every week at the same times that you uh, get them on your other streaming services. So I was really, really happy to find that, um, that tool within the YouTube dashboard when I was doing some updating and some maintenance and some house cleaning, that sort of thing. I saw a category called podcasts, and there it was. Wow. I could bring in all the previous podcasts and also set it up so the, uh, the new podcast will get posted to YouTube uh, at the same time as it does on all the other streaming services. So I was really, really excited about that. And you can tell the difference between the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast and the full video a Monday morning mailbag, but just by looking at the thumbnail. If you see a picture of George, that's the podcast. If you see uh, me, <laughs> me holding a coffee mug, that's the full video version. And of course, if you see a cartoon character of a guy holding a coffee mug, that's the second cup podcast. So uh, Larry, thanks very, very much for your kind words regarding the second cup podcast on YouTube. I'm really, really excited that both of these are available on YouTube because I know a lot of folks love YouTube and they don't venture far from it. So now both of those podcasts are available here every single week at the same time as the other, as the other streaming services right here on YouTube. Viewer, all the RPM wrote, I haven't had a bad treat blade that didn't work for me. 
Uh, yeah, treat blades are wonderful. I like them a lot, but here's one that I really enjoy using, and that is the Treat New Steel. Boy, I like these a lot. These are absolutely wonderful, and uh, yeah, I like these. So if you like treat blades, give the New Steel Treat Blade a try. Uh, I really, really enjoy using these, absolutely. Uh, viewer MEHMD1 wrote, nice video. I'm thinking of purchasing some Phoenix shaving products. You really ought to rinse the alum residue from your face. If you don't, it will interact with your aftershave splash and balm, and you won't get as much out of those products. Uh, you know what? I've done it both ways. I've rinsed the alum off, and I've left the alum on. And to be perfectly honest with you, uh, I haven't noticed much difference. I still get a great kick from my aftershave splash, uh, especially from those aftershave splashes like uh, Diver Down and this Bay, the Ogallala Bay Rum that I've been using recently and some others that have that really, really nice kick. Uh, awesome Sauce and Paraso Green and those kinds of things. Uh, but um, yeah, every once in a while, uh, perhaps I should uh, start rinsing it off. But um, I've done it both ways and you know what? I just... I leave it on there, and I really haven't. I really haven't felt that it hinders the aftershave splash or balm. However, I think uh, you're correct in that maybe I should rinse it off just to compare and contrast. So thanks very much for pointing that out. I really do appreciate it. And I'll put it to the viewers: Do you rinse off the Allen block after applying, or do you leave it on like me? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, Jason Miller wrote. Uh, as usual, another great 3MB. Thanks very much, Jason. I really, really do appreciate it. From what I know, uh, the later the made gem razor, the smoother they are. I love my gem G-Bar razor. I'm curious to find the last version of gem razors called the Gem Contour, made in 1979, I believe. Uh, you know what? That is a great, great question. Does anyone out there know if the Gem Contour was the last uh, version of the Gem Razor made uh, in 1979? I, I'm not entirely sure. Now, I do have a Gem, uh, a Gem G Bar Razor. I have one of those, and I think I have one of those. I, have, I think it's also known as the Pedestal, if I'm correct. I'm not entirely sure. I, I'll have to look at my Gem Razors again. Uh, however, uh, I believe the uh, Schick injector razors were the same way. That if you get an early Schick injector razor from, say, the early 30s, middle 30s, late 30s, those are going to be more aggressive than uh, Schick injector razors from, say, the middle 40s, late 40s, early 50s, on into the 60s. Those got milder and milder as well. Uh, if I recall correctly, I believe I came across a piece of information that said the same thing. So I, I, would, uh, I wouldn't I would be surprised at all that Gem got milder and milder and milder because, boy, oh boy, these micromatics, uh, boy, <laughs> these, yeah, you got to use a really, really light touch with the Gem micromatic. This, you'll get great shaves, but you got to change your technique up and you have to use a very, very light, light touch. Absolutely. And uh, the open comb is even a little more aggressive than the regular uh, clog proof micromatic, which is what I'm holding here. So I think I use the uh, the open comb once. And to be honest with you, I don't think I can use that. That's a little too much for me. But yes, uh, I think that some of the later gem razors are milder, uh, like the Flying Wing, also known as the Bull Tip. This one, I believe, is, matter of fact, yeah, I think this is milder than the, than the Micromatic. And uh, I find myself gravitating towards the, uh, the Flying Wing here, or no, also known as the bull tip, bull tip. One other additional information, it has the, uh, the seeing eye on it right here, this little marking right here on the, on the face of the plate. That was a, a marketing gimmick, as I understand, a marketing gimmick, as I understand, to um, remind you to hold that surface flat against your face so the, uh, so you would get the correct cutting angle, shaving angle, like that. So to remind you not to hold it like this, you know, where it would kind of really be a rough shave, but to hold that face, hold that eye on that face right flat against your 
your face so you would have the correct shaving angle. So that's kind of neat too, kind of like um, a different version of the Henson where the shaving angle is built right into the razor head. So another really, really great appeal of the gem razors is in that you can find the shaving angle very, very easily. Um, so thanks for that, Jason. Really, really do appreciate it. Viewer Corey G wrote, one thing I noticed right away after switching from a cartridge razor to a safety razor is I'm not getting razor bumps on my neck anymore. Whenever I used cartridge razors, I was always getting razor bumps on my neck. I wish I would have switched to a safety razor years ago. I know that's all my grandfather used was a safety razor. They always say that new is better, but whenever it comes to shaving, that's not the case at all. The old traditional way is much better. Well, I agree with you, Corey, and welcome to the traditional wet shave and, the, and using a safety razor. Great to hear that you're getting great results. I'm with you. I wish I would have come back to the safety razor and the traditional wet shave years ago as well. I'm glad I'm here now, and I'm glad you're here now as well. So enjoy your wet shaving journey. Now, as far as cartridge razors, we do cover that on the channel every once in a while. And let me just say that a uh, cartridge razor with, say, three blades or less is probably the direction I go in, especially if I have to travel by air and I'm only taking a carry-on and they won't allow a safety razor and a dop kit. So uh, there are a lot of uh, good, uh, serviceable cartridge razor options out there that have single blades and maybe two blades, maybe three blades at the most uh, that you could put in your dop kit and fly away for the weekend with only a carry-on and it'll give you a, a serviceable shave. But I'm in your camp, the multi-blade uh, cartridge razors out there. Uh, I think that's why a lot of folks came back to the traditional wet shave because all those blades uh, over time and use were starting to give them some irritation and razor bumps and that sort of thing. Yeah, a single blade is just the best way to shave. My father stressed this to me for years and really I stupidly did not listen. But uh, I think, again, you know, I'll just tell you briefly here, when I, when I purchased my folks home after they passed away, I was cleaning out the bathroom and I came across uh, my father's safety razor. And I think, he, <laughs> I think he was calling to me from the great beyond, Mark, here it is, my safety razor. Would you please use it already? Please give it a try. <laughs> so I think it was uh, a really, really, uh, yeah, I think, Dad was, I think Dad was talking to me. And I'm so glad I came back to the traditional wet shave. But more importantly, Corey, I'm so glad that you found the traditional wet shave as well. You know, great, great to hear. Absolutely great to hear. And uh, Alfred Spencer wrote, it's funny because on the front of the aftershave label, it says apply generously. Yeah, now Alfred is referring to the Ogallala Bay Rum aftershave pre-shave and skin toner that I used in a review. And my gosh, I probably sprayed this probably maybe 10, 12 times in my hand in order to uh, do the pre-shave part of the shave. And my gosh, did this give me a lot of warmth and burning, but it didn't create any irritation at all, which is, which is good news. Now, uh, after that review, I was talking about how um, I might work my way up to maybe more than one spray. Well, you know what? Before cameras rolled, not only did I use the, uh, the Bic Blade, but I also use the Ogallala Bay Rum uh, shave soap right here. And this is the case for it. And the aftershave, uh, the box for it, the, the box. I've got, I've got the shave soap in the other room there in my shave bowl. But this is the Bay Rum box that it came in. And here's the Bay Rum aftershave. And I was going to, as I was as I was saying, I, I was going to uh, limit myself to one spray. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm finding that after several uses of the Bay Rum Shave Soap and the Aftershave, I'm now up to about two and a half sprays uh, without any problem, both for pre-shave and aftershave, and it feels great. So I think perhaps my, my skin wasn't attuned to this particular Bay Rum, and now I think I am becoming more and more accustomed to it. So I like it a lot, and I have, I'm finding that the uh, Bay Rum Shave Soap is probably more suited for face lathering. Let me know in the comments below if you use the Ogallala Bay Rum Soap and if you agree with that. I did bowl lather before cameras rolled, 
And uh, it was fine, but I think my conclusion here is that uh, it's probably better for uh, face lathering. It's a good hard puck. You put it in a shave bowl, you add some hot water, you run your brush over that, and you go about doing a, a, a face lather. Uh, the good news is that the uh, Bay Rum aftershave, when used as a pre-shave, uh, does not get in the way of the face lathering at all. Uh, it, they, they play nicely together. So, yeah, I'm enjoying the Ogallala Bay Rum. And again, thanks to Chuck Price for pointing it out and recommending it. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty darn good. But, yeah, when you first use it, you know, just be aware that there is going to be a, a big, big kick. But I'm finding that I'm becoming more and more accustomed to it. So a uh, very, very satisfying shave with it before cameras roll. And that wraps up this week's refill segment. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, we mentioned at the beginning of the show that we have a new razor to show you. And you'll also know that the holiday season is right around the corner. Before you know it, it'll be over the river and through the woods. And a lot of us will be traveling to see family and friends. And perhaps we'd like to take a more compact, more agreeable travel razor with us. Well, the folks at Timeless Razor have you covered. This is what Jeremiah very, very kindly sent to the channel and allowed me to show to you. Here it is right here. This is the Timeless Razor Travel Razor. Now, the heart of this is the TRH9 Stainless Steel Nub Short Handle. It measures 14 millimeters by 56 millimeters. And as they write on their product page, uh, the safety razor handle is made from solid 304 stainless steel. It has small neural-like cuts, which provide an enhanced grip when shaving. Like all timeless razor parts, it is fully interchangeable with all of our razors and fits most other razor brands as well, 100% made in the USA. Now, Jeremiah of Timeless Razor also wrote the following, This setup is what I consider to be an excellent travel set due to its size and is great for those that have a very gentle three-finger grip, which is what I do, and it has excellent control with it being so much shorter than a typical handle. I absolutely agree. I've used this already, and I used it before cameras roll, and it has an excellent, it allows you to have an excellent, excellent three-finger grip, which is the first two fingers here and a thumb, and then I rest the bottom of the handle on my third finger just like that. The knurling on the handle is just impeccable. It provides such a wonderful grip, and it allows you to move this razor head back and forth with a great deal of ease. It's very, very maneuverable. Now, I have on here the slim razor head from Timeless Razor in stainless steel with this beautiful scalloped cap here. So know that if you have a Timeless Razor head that you really, really like, all you have to do is acquire the handle, and you've got a travel razor. Now, he mentioned set. What he's referring to is a stand that you can get that goes along with this razor. How about that? Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Look at that. Now, this stand is a bit smaller than their standard stand that you would see from Timeless Razor. Here is my bronze razor right next to it. And you can see the size, the size difference. It's absolutely beautiful, and it looks just, it looks great on a counter. And the one thing I like about this stand is that, uh, let's say you check into a hotel, and maybe the bathroom counter is a little questionable as far as cleanliness, or maybe you don't think it's as sanitary as it should be, whatever the reason is. Well, now you have a stand that you can take along with you in your travel razor, so you don't have to worry about laying this razor down on the counter or on the sink or anything like that. You can put it in the stand like that, and uh, you know, you're know you assured of getting a really, really good, good shave, a good clean shave, let me put it to you that way. Absolutely beautiful, great weight, really, really wonderful heft for the size, and it is so maneuverable. Probably the best travel razor I've ever used due to the wonderful shape and knurling of the handle and the wonderful, wonderful slim razor head, uh, which has a 0.5 millimeter blade gap. It's just such a smooth, smooth shave. Absolutely wonderful. Now, again, let me give you the dimensions of this. 
It's uh, 14 millimeters in diameter. Uh, the length is 56 millimeters. The weight is 53 grams, and the thread size is M5 by 0.8 millimeters. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful laser. And, uh, you know, if you're wondering how you can pack this up, well, you can use a uh, regular razor case like the Timeless Razor case like this. And fully assembled, you can just insert it uh, in there like that. Okay? And you have a little real estate there at the bottom that's not being used, but still it's, it's nicely protected, so you can take it like that if you want to. Another option that I found that works really, really well is one of these, uh, I guess you can call it a trifold canvas uh, travel bag travel case rather, uh, that opens up like this and it has these elastic uh, pieces here for your handle, your razor head and some blades. And uh, this fits in there very, very nicely. Uh, and you can then go ahead and fold that up and you have, uh, you have it in there, uh, it's nicely protected. And if you want to, you can get a, a canvas uh, bag or a little leather bag and you can throw your your stand in there, something like that. You can even add your uh, your case with your razor in there like that and you know, tighten that all up. So now you have the razor and the stand all together with some blades in there you can take and throw into, uh, you know, take with you as you travel, uh, you know, make that drive, a, <laughs> you know, from one end of the state to the other to see family, that sort of thing. So yeah, it's an absolutely uh, beautiful, beautiful travel razor travel system. Again, the handle is fully interchangeable with all the timeless razor, uh, razor heads and parts and uh, just makes an absolutely fantastic, fantastic travel razor. Uh, Jeremiah very, very kindly and generously donated a number of timeless razors to the, as door prizes at the Ohio Wet Shaver, Ohio Wet Shavers meetup and he donated this setup uh, as a door prize. And someone, I don't know who it was, uh, walked away with this and uh, absolutely wonderful, wonderful uh, razor to have. And again, as I said, I've, I've, I've reviewed a number of travel razors on the channel. This one by far is the best because it's very, very solid. It's got great heft. It's very, very well made. And it accommodates these wonderful, wonderful uh, timeless razor uh, timeless razor heads, uh, just absolutely fantastic. I should say timeless razor, razor heads, absolutely fantastic. So check it out. We'll have links below to the TRH9 stainless steel nub short handle from Timeless Razor and all their other great, great component parts uh, that will, when put together make an absolutely beautiful, beautiful travel razor. My thanks again to Jeremiah, Doug, Mark, Matt and Nick at Timeless Razor for very, very kindly and generously sending this along to the channel and allowing me to share with all the viewers out there. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Again, folks, we'll have links below. Well, viewer Mark Bagwell is introducing us and sharing with us his experience with Riva shaving brushes. Uh, and here's his review. Riva made with an Italian flair and design. As you can see, his brush handles are absolutely beautiful and at the same time are very comfortable in the hand. The knots are super high density with good flow through and have incredibly soft tips. It goes without saying, I love these brushes. And honestly, the last thing I needed was another brush but one look at this beauty with a Manchurian 26 millimeter knot, and I had to have it. But there is one thing about Riva brushes that I must caution you about. Visiting his website can be very dangerous to your pocketbook <laughs> because it's almost impossible to go and look without purchasing. Wow, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous shaving brushes, Mark. And it sounds like the performance is absolutely top notch. So thank you very, very much for introducing many of us to the Riva shaving brushes and for that very, very kind review. Really, really do appreciate it. Folks, we will have a link to uh, the Riva brushes of Italy uh, that can be found on Etsy. Uh, Mark provided the link and we will pass that link to you below. In case you're listening to the podcast, the link is www.etsy.com 
Etsy, E-T-S-Y, www.etsy.com slash shop slash Riva Brushes Italy. One more time, www.etsy.com slash shop slash Riva, R-I-V-A, Riva Brushes Italy. So they're up on Etsy. Mark, thanks very, very much for the photos, the review, and the link. Really do appreciate it. Well, in a previous Monday morning mailbag, we talked about Phoenix Shaving's brand new shaving scuttle, the Spacescape Scuttle. This is the fourth version of the shaving scuttle that they've released. The previous version, version three, was the Dreamscape Scuttle, which I have and absolutely love. It allows you to develop a really beautiful, warm lather for your traditional wet shave. I absolutely love it. Love the warm lather that it develops. And it's absolutely a wonderful piece of shaving gear to have in your shave den. I absolutely recommend you getting one. Absolutely wonderful. Well, a couple of viewers went ahead and purchased the new Spacescape Scuttle, which is an upgrade and an improvement over the Dreamscape Scuttle. Uh, and Stephen Howard wrote, Mark, the Spacescape Scuttle arrived today and it's a beauty. We'll send an update once I've had a chance to use it. Hope all is well. Have a great day. Stephen, thanks very, very much. Looking forward to your review and photos and whatever else you'll be sending along so we can share it with all the viewers out there. Thank you very, very much. Viewer Larry Sablotny wrote, The Spacescape has been shipped and should be here Monday. I'll let you know how my Tuesday lather does. I'll use the Dreamscape on Monday and compare with the same shave soap and amount in the Spacescape Tuesday and compare lather. Wow, Larry, thank you very, very much. Really looking forward to the comparison between the Dreamscape and the Spacescape. Wow, that is going to be of great interest to all the viewers out there. Thank you very, very much. Folks, as soon as we hear from Stephen and Larry, we will share their comments, their reviews and photos and whatever else they send along with all of you. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Viewer Andrew Hill sent this along and he wrote, Pick these up this morning in a local antique shop. A local artisan had shave soaps and handmade lather bowls. Beautiful bowl. And the soap is a nice goat's milk shave soap with coconut oils and others in it. Smells very nice. At only $7 for the soap and $15 for the bowl. Considering they're handmade, I thought it was a good deal. Just goes to show to keep your eyes open in antique shops. You may find more than just an old razor. Andrew, thanks very, very much for sending this along. Absolutely looks like a beautiful, beautiful couple of finds there. Really, really wonderful. And yes, folks, it's a great reminder to always keep your eyes open at an antique shop, uh, yard sales, garage sales, estate sales, that sort of thing, because you never know what you'll find. And Andrew here has found a wonderful, wonderful new shaving soap and a new handmade lathering bowl. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks very much for sending along the photos and the update on this, Andrew. Really, really do appreciate it. Well, we're mentioning this at the 11th hour, but there's still time to get 15% off aftershaves and colognes from Clubman. Just navigate over to www.clubmanonline.com and use the code DICEMAN, D-I-C-E-M-A-N, all in capital letters, once more, DICEMAN, D-I-C-E-M-A-N, all in capital letters, and you'll get 15% off aftershaves and cologne from Clubman. Now, the sale ends today, Monday, October 23rd, 2023, at 11.59 Central Standard Time. So hopefully you'll be watching this early enough to where you can navigate, surf on up to clubmanonline.com. Once more, www.clubmanonline.com and use the code DICEMAN to get 15% off Clubman aftershaves and colognes. We'll have the link below. Well, this past Friday, we reviewed Louis Shave Soap available exclusively at the Wet Shaving Store. And as they write on their product page, it's a special creation born from the soulful collaboration between the Wet Shaving Store, the good folks at Shave Dad, 
and the masters of soap at Master Soap Creations. Louie, it's all about the scent, and let me tell you, it's like a smooth jazz melody for your senses. It's a dupe of Joe Malone's Vetiver and Golden Vanilla, a fragrant symphony that's going to transport you to a world of pure indulgence. Imagine the sweet embrace of golden vanilla laced with the earthy notes of vetiver. It's like a musical journey for your nose. <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of musical journeys, coincidentally, Jamie Horn, when he was in high school, received the National Louis Armstrong Jazz Music Award. How about that? Wow. And it just happens to coincide with Louis Shave Soap. Now, as Jamie tells me, they only give out one per high school per year. It's the Academy Award of Music High School Awards. Absolutely. Well done, Jamie. So it was a happy coincidence that we were talking about a really wonderful shave soap with a wonderful scent that creates a wonderful lather. And here we have a viewer in our audience that has won a wonderful award, both celebrating the life, the legacy, the music of Louis Armstrong. Folks, we'll have links below. And here's a heads up. From Phoenix Shaving, Blue Sahwen is back. That's right, a fall seasonal scent you'll use all year. Here's the scent profile. Sandalwood, burnt sugar, bourbon and pumpkin, and it's oak barrel aged. It's absolutely fantastic. This is one of my favorite fall Phoenix shaving scents. Absolutely. And as they write here, it's back, people. One of our most epic and memorable fall favorites, Blue Sawin. This stuff is just smooth, sensual, boozy, and downright masculine. Yeah, I've been using it this season already. It's absolutely wonderful. I love that burnt sugar uh, part of the scent. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And of course, it's CK6, so you get this wonderful, wonderful lathering performance. So check it out. It's back for the autumn. Blue Sawin will have links below. And that wraps up this week's new wet shaving gear segments. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's get to some of these questions and comments. Viewer Aaron Watson sent an email and the subject heading reads, great video to share with viewers. And Aaron wrote, hi Mark, I hope all is well with you. I wanted to share a great video from the Gentleman's Gazette that many viewers would find interesting and helpful. The channel is dedicated to classical men's style, clothing, and fine living. They have done several videos on wet shaving, especially using double-edged safety razors. They are an excellent source for people new to this shaving method. A recent video reviewed a dozen double-edged blades, many of which I had never heard. This would be a great watch for newbies and veteran wet shavers. Thanks. Aaron Watson. Well, Aaron, thanks very much for passing this along and providing the link. Folks, we'll share the link with you below. I had a chance to briefly look at the video. It's very, very well done. They do cover a lot of different double-edged razor blades, some of which we've talked about here on the channel. I'll let you go up there and check it out yourself. It's very, very well done. And they also have a lot of followers up there, a lot of viewers, a lot of subscribers. And of course, as Aaron mentioned, they do emphasize men's style, clothing, and and fine living, and they do cover the traditional life shape. So it definitely is worth a look because the video is very well produced and looks to be very, very informative. I had a brief look at it, and just from what I saw, was very, very good. So Aaron, thanks very, very much for passing this along. Really do appreciate it. Folks, we'll have the link below. Thanks again, Aaron. Viewer Robert Ross sent along the following email, and the subject heading reads, is a three-pass shave necessary? And Robert wrote, Hi, Mark. I have been traditional wet shaving for about a year and a half and absolutely love it. When I first started shaving, the word on the street was, you have to do a three-pass shave, and that's exactly what I have been doing. Recently, I have watched several YouTube videos where the hosts do a two-pass shave only. So I thought I would give it a try. Here's what I did. 
First pass, go north to south with the grain on my cheeks, neck, goatee, and mustache in that order. Second pass, against the grain on my cheeks, goatee, and mustache. On my neck, I change things up slightly. I go against the grain on a 45 degree angle towards the center. I find this helps to remove more hair in tricky spots below the jawline. Clean up. If necessary, I do a light pass right under my jawline across the grain. I do not do a full on across the grain pass below the jawline as it would lead to irritation. So I guess you could say I am now hooked on a two plus pass shave rather than a full three pass shave. The shave felt identical, except there was less razor time on my face. Do other subscribers on your channel do a two pass shave? Have a great day, Bob Ross. Bob, an absolutely wonderful, wonderful question. Folks, what is it? Do you do a two pass shave or a three pass shave or somewhere in between two passes with some touch up? I know that I started with a three pass shave and my shave has evolved into at times a two pass shave, maybe with a little bit of touch up. It depends on the aggression of the razor, the sharpness of the blade, the kind of shave soap I'm using, that sort of thing. It also depends on the amount of beard growth I have. Generally speaking, one day's worth of beard growth, I'm finding that I can get a nice two pass shave, maybe with a little bit of touch up. If I have two days worth of beard growth or more, it's usually, generally speaking, a three pass shave for me. But there are variations that come into play uh, regarding uh, the amount of beard growth I have and the number of passes I do. Also, viewers were encouraging me to change up my shave rather than start with the grain, start with that first pass across the grain and then do a second pass against the grain and see how that finishes up. I'm still going to do that. I still have to do that. I, I, I'm in the habit of starting with the grain. I have to break that, break that habit. But yes, like you, Robert, when I came back to the traditional wet shave and I started, the word was do a three pass shave with the grain, across the grain and against the grain. And that's what I held to. And it ha it's, it's, it's been probably in the last year and a half or so, maybe even a little bit longer, that I've been changing things up and really kind of uh, moving towards a two-pass shave, realizing that, you know, I sometimes don't need a third pass. But there are times when I do do a third pass for the sheer enjoyment of it. So I'll put it to the viewers out there. Uh, what say you? Are you a three-pass shaver or a two-pass shaver or somewhere in between? Uh, I know Jimmy V Photography will sometimes do four passes because he's having such a great shave. Do you do that also? Do you do more than three passes? Please comment below and let us know. Uh, Bob, an absolutely great, great question. And thank you for sharing your shaving routine with all the viewers out there. Thanks again, Bob. Really do appreciate it. Well, Mark Bagwell very kindly sent along this review on his Prospector Razor. Want to showcase it in this segment of the show because it's really very, very special. And Mark wrote, there be gold in them there hills. That's right. So it's time to grab a prospector. No, I'm not talking about an old guy holding a pick and axe. I'm talking about a Gillette 1930s new short comb in the prospector color theme, Rhodium and Gold by Razor Emporium. Until recently, this razor was not offered in the Prospector theme, but after contacting Matt and a little persuading on my part, I am happy to say they are now offering these razors upon request. But I have the satisfaction of knowing mine is the first. And as you can see, the good people at Razor Emporium did a fantastic job. My new razor is a stunner. People who know me know I have a large collection of vintage Gillettes and my new Prospector is the flagship of my collection. So if you're wanting your own piece of Americano history, then contact Matt at Razor Emporium and tell him you're wanting a Mark Bagwell special. <laughs> On second thought, you better just tell him you want a Prospector. I've purchased so many razors from Matt and there's no telling what razor you might get. Mark, that's absolutely 
a beautiful, gorgeous razor. Folks, we will have a link to Razor Emporium below so you can check it out. The Prospector Razor, a vintage Gillette 1930s new short comb in the Prospector color theme of rhodium and gold by Razor Emporium. Mark, thanks so much. Again, folks, we'll have the link below. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag for this week. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out all the wonderful artists and soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artists and shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review on this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.